Warning. You've reached On The Box with great comfort and are now in a biblical truth zone. Place all questions about theology, current events, and evangelism on the box where they'll be weighed against the truth of God's Word. Ready your hearts and minds. You're about to be inspired and equipped to fulfill the Great Commission. Programming to engage in five, four, three, two, one. Scripture says that through many trials we will enter the kingdom, and in this world we will have tribulation. And today in California, friends, here at On the Box, we are experiencing that with 80 degree winter weather. I was so going to say, for us. do not mention the weather to poor people Does that are freezing. People, right? I would, I'd be bitter and angry and resentful. It's a free country. They it's can a, move here. It's not a free country. It's a freezing country. It is a freezing country, they're, but they're no one is forcing them to live there. Yes, they are. They're, okay. they're stuck they're by their own. They're called to their region. No, they're, <laughs> they're trapped by their situation. <laughs> they can't get out of it. They've got a mortgage in a cold area, and we are, no, we are. That smog out here is disgusting. It's terrible. There's Earth, gang we had an shoot, earthquake. In fact, shootings. yesterday we had an earthquake. That was terrifying. Yeah, yeah and the so freeway traffic is awful. Y- you don't want to come to California. <laughs> so, Ray, I see a dog. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, Sitting on your side there. God bless you. This, this is uh, from Charlotte and Ryan uh, uh, Atkins, who, uh, who came to visit us last week, I think. And they sent me a little dog. Look and I think that. we've even got a picture because you can't. There it is. Aww. Is that a little marble dog? Ray? It's, yeah, it's a little marble that dog. That is pretty cool. It's actually edible. Try it out. Reminds me of the dog of the dog from uh, what was it, Mark? What was uh, that? How show? to Train Your Memory. Oh yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. What's yeah. it called? Yeah, I, I little rascals. <laughs> little rascals dog. He's got the little circles on his eyes. Anyway, thank you very much, yes. uh, Charlotte and, and Ryan. We really appreciate. We it. Really do appreciate it. Well, uh, today we have uh, quite a few things to cover, but as we did yesterday, we are going to jump right into the topic of the day. And Ray, this is. Pretty disturbing, wouldn't you say? It's not as disturbing as missing out on this email I was going to read from Manuel. Oh, Ray has an email to read from <laughs> Manuel. <laughs> um, Manuel, my personal assistant in France, sent me this, and this is what, it's just very encouraging. I went to uh, an African-American gentleman on the street. He was really open in the end when I said something like, so when are you going to make peace with God? Humble yourself, repent, and throw yourself on his mercy. He started to cry, tears and tears. He was sobbing and couldn't stop. He said, today, I need to do it today. So that's encouraging. Every one in a million, someone's sorry for their sins. Yeah, (laughs) the what must I do to be saved scenario. Well, God bless Manuel for his faithfulness. And my heart uh, really ached when I read this story that we're going to touch on today. Uh, This is from Yahoo News. Stephen Slevin spent 22 months in solitary confinement in a New Mexico jail. During that time, his mental health deteriorated, fungus grew on his skin, and he was forced to pull his own tooth after being denied access to a dentist. A recent settlement with Donna uh, Anna County resulted in Slevin receiving $15.5 million. Guys, do we have the picture of this gentleman? That's the before and after shot. That's the before and after shot. And I, I just, I read that story and I thought, how in the world can a human being be kept for 22 months in solitary confinement and just left there. Uh, Mark, can you imagine something of this sort? You know, I was talking with uh, you guys uh, right before the show, and I was thinking, you know, what would it take in order to spend 22 months, not quite two years, mind you, 22 months inside of solitary confinement, no access to the Internet, your Bible, wife, your wife, your kids, oh. and everything else. Uh, easy, I wonder, would you do Cereal. that for $50 billion? I would. <laughs> Maybe 51. <laughs> <laughs> You've got oh, to. Oh, come on, Think Ray. what you could, the good you yeah. could do with the money and the pro- proclamation of the gospel. It's, I mean, I'd rather do that and go to South okay, America. Okay, but Ray, we always, we always give scenarios of you being put in a room. Hurry up. With a, with a server. <laughs> this is a guy who's going to sit for 22 months in jail. <laughs> and we talk about how you would die. I mean, come on. 22 months yeah. with nothing. Nothing to read, nothing to, to watch. Yeah, but you've, you, could, you could write scripture on the walls. You could memorize scripture. No, you no pencil, s- nothing. Cereal? No cereal. Forget it. <laughs> See? No way. <laughs> now, what was the name of that movie? This guy pulled his own tooth, which reminded me of the movie that Mark and I once watched about the FedEx guy that was stuck oh, in the... Oh, yes. Uh, uh, Castaway. Castaway. Yeah, with Tom Hanks. We, we had a ball watching that movie, and we surmised at the end that package he didn't open would have had a, an international cell phone <laughs> in it. 
<laughs> and Novocaine to stop the, the uh, pain in I would have opened that. Would oh, open first that thing I would have opened and right. said, oh, it's an international store. I don't oh, think cool. that would have been a matter of integrity to have opened I will, the package. I'll call my wife, tell her where I am, and I'll use the Novocaine to pull this tooth oh, out. Oh, man. Yeah, that was – that. but, you know, you th actually, that's a good point you bring up that movie. What happens to the human mind? He went crazy, didn't You know, he? when you don't have human contact or mm. anything to stimulate your mind. I mean, he started talking to this. You said, Mark and I had a ball. I thought you were being funny. Oh, what, but was, he had it? That what ball was the name Wilson, of it? Wilson. Remember? I was going to say Wesley, but it's oh. Wilson. But, yeah. but I mean, you know, that... <laughs> <laughs> what were you going to say? Wesley. Wesley. <laughs> Why did I think Wesley? I, 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 uh, I was engaged in something else, I guess. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, anyhow. Anita. So, um, you know, but Ray, seriously. Uh, Anita got engaged. Did you, we're not allowed to say that. It was on Facebook, wasn't it? Yes. Uh, I, I guess it's uh, public knowledge. Yeah, now. it is yeah, public Anita knowledge. Anita got engaged. Woo! Yes. <laughs> Congratulations. And she was engaged Anita. to Wesley. We and are very, uh, very happy for Anita. Yeah. But very sad because... Uh, yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> when someone gets married, you don't see him as often. Anyway, no, you certainly don't. So, um, but but Ray, you know, when you squirrel. think of, when you think about <laughs> <laughs> we got squirrels <laughs> everywhere today, friends. But when you think about a story like this, I mean, is this a byproduct of man's fallen nature? How in the world can people neglect this guy for twenty uh, years? I think it, it really epitomizes what's happened in our justice system. You know, I am I am pro capital punishment. I agree with the Bible. If a man takes a man's life and he's guilty, his life should be taken right. because God respects human life. But I haven't got confidence in the in the justice system. I could not mm. st stand up and say this guy's guilty because we've got corrupt lawyers, we've got dozy. Uh, uh, people who sit on juries that aren't God-fearing, right. and they're prejudicial, and, and, and consequently we've got all these people on death row, and people have been executed, they're finding out they're, they're guiltless, mm. they're totally innocent. Right. And so this doesn't surprise me with a judicial system, we've really lost the, the fear of God. Yeah, and you know, Mark, maybe you can speak to this. Oftentimes, especially atheists, and hello to our atheist friends who are watching, mm -hmm. will often cite certain passages out of context regarding the God of the Old Testament, which they call the God of the Old Testament, saying, look at him. He's so harsh. He's so cruel. But when we look in Scripture, we see that God has a just nature to him, and he demands that of his people. Yeah, um, absolutely. The book of Acts tells us that God is the judge of the universe. You don't have to worry about corrupt judges when you die. The Bible says the eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch of the good as well as the evil. Every idle word a man speaks, he's going to have to give an account thereof on the day of judgment. We need to be careful when we begin to accuse God of being corrupt, not realizing that you yourself are actually the corrupt one. And when you stand in his court, you actually won't be standing at all. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And everything you've ever done in darkness and everything you've ever done in light, when you've mocked God, when you didn't mock God and you thought you were doing something beautiful and wholesome was actually disgusting in the eyes of God, because of God's holiness, because of God's righteousness. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. He is the judge of the living as well as the dead. And there is going to be a judgment day. And for those that are not found in Christ, there is literal hell to pay. Wow. But if you are a Christian and you've been found in Christ, the righteousness which was required of the law, that Jesus Christ fulfills will be accounted onto you because of what Christ did. You don't have to worry about that great white throne judgment hmm. because Jesus took upon himself the wrath of Almighty God on that cross six hours, 2,000 years ago. That is the amazing thing of what Christ did. <clears throat> you don't have to stand before God as your judge. You can stand before him as your friend if you have been found in Christ, if you repent of your sins and place your trust in him. So that's the beautiful thing about this. And you think of, well, man, how could this guy sit 22 months? Man, he deserves, you know, an, am an amazing amount of money, even more than what he was uh, given. Oh. Well, let me tell you, Jesus Christ, who was supremely innocent, was separated from the Father. And he wasn't because he was guilty. It was because you and I were guilty. Jesus paid a debt he didn't know because you and I owed a debt we could never pay. Wow. So. No, I was just reading more about this guy, and I need to pray, pray for this guy because my heart breaks for him. He's 22 months in jail. I give him $15 million. He's got lung cancer, suffers depression. If you look at the picture, can we put the picture up again, uh, Danny, or is it gone? If you look in his eyes, he is just – he's just – Oh. Absent, yeah. he's lost, lost. Different it. human being. I yeah. mean, you know, you look at the contrast, uh, the before and after. 
Yeah, and, it is. And this $15.5 million, I hope he gets it. Think of the O.J. Simpson civil case where they were, O.J. Simpson yeah. was supposed to be. He didn't, he didn't get a bean. Right. Our system is just totally corrupt. And, you know, atheists mock <coughs> the, what they call slaves in, in the Bible. But when a person went into um, financial difficulty in the Old Testament, they became bond servants and paid off their debt, worked for their a master rather than be thrown into jail by themselves. Right. You wouldn't do that to an animal what we do nowadays yeah. and so uh, uh, yeah it's just a, a corrupt system and it's, it's heartbreaking and it broke my heart to read this quote from him he said why they did what they did I'll never know Slevin told KOB4 uh, TV waking a uh, walking by me watching me deteriorate day after day after day and they did nothing at all to get me help I mean you could just and it who says, are they know, is that the guards I, I, I presume yeah, yeah. You know, but <clears throat> just the thought of that. I mean, you know, we joke around about would you do it for this amount of money and, and that amount of money and whatnot. And again, we're thinking, you know, we can use that money for, for the kingdom of God. We can use that money for the gospel's sake. Absolutely. But still, when you, when you consider that, you know, 22 months of so – and again, he wasn't just in jail, solitary confinement by himself. Yeah. You know, that's, that's, a, that's a tough deal. And it comes back to would you sell your eyes for $100 million. Right. And this guy has sold his soul. For nothing. This money's going to mean nothing to yeah. him. You and know? especially in his case, it's not like he's got a goal to attain. He doesn't know what's happening. Is it going to be 22 months? Is it going to be 10 years? He's sitting there day yeah. after day after. 22 months. I can't, I can't even fathom how that happened. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you would think he'd get $100 million for something like this. Seriously. Yeah. But that's not even going to be consolation to him because he's virtually lost his mind. He suffered depression and he's got lung cancer. Right. So what can that help, help his uh, medical payments? Because it probably cost $15 million bucks with the, with the medical system as it is if, yeah. he, if he hasn't got insurance. Right. Well, you know, and this brings something to mind. <clears throat> we talk about... Um, Doing something like this for money, mm. you think of how many believers do things like this for the love of Christ Absolutely. and endure, not, not just being in solitary confinement, but torture yeah. and persecution and, you know, seeing their family members be put to and death. Fox's Book of Martyrs. Right. Just terrific. If yeah. you've never read Fox's Book of Martyrs, <coughs> Atheists, you might like some bedtime reading. It's, yeah. uh, it's horrific. And I, I, we were reading recently uh, for our devotions with the kids about this lady <laughs> in a persecuted nation who began to prepare herself for the coming persecution because she knew it was coming. Mm. She began to intentionally eat rotten food from, from garbage cans because she knew that would be her predicament in prison when she went to prison for Christ, and she did. And yet, that was her mindset. Let me be ready that I may endure and glorify God even in that. I don't even have a joke to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ray. Yeah, that was really, that's uh, really... Um, Oh, it, it just moved us, you know, as a family. But, but Mark, you want to speak to that real quickly in terms of uh, the importance of us praying for our brothers and sisters in Christ who are being persecuted and the reality of that taking place today? Yeah, you know, we can serve as senders. You may not be able to go out into the 1040 window in the Darfur regions of Africa. You may not have the finances and the funds to be able to do things that other people are doing. But you can serve as a sender. You can get down on your knees and you could be there with your brothers and your sisters that are being tortured, that are laying down their lives in the remote places of the world. You can go. You know, it's been said that Satan trembles when he sees the weakest saint upon his knees. Mm. And when we get down on our, our knees, we'll never stand as tall. We'll never stand as tall as when we're on our knees. And if we want to uh, have an impact for those that are laying down their lives, I'll tell you, you need to bridge the gap. You need to lift up the arms of those that are willing and ready and able to go. So you're not able to go, but you are able to send. Mm -hmm. So stand in the gap and allow those people to know that you are standing in the gap. You know, I hear from missionaries all the time that they're so encouraged to give me their newsletter because I respond to their newsletter mm -hmm. and I say, hey, I'm praying for you. I prayed for that aspect. And they say, and I hear it time and time again, nobody responds to the newsletter like you. Now, obviously, people read it, you know, or, or they, so, something happens, but I'll say, respond. Let them know that you're praying for them. If you're not able to financially support, you're certainly able to prayer support. Yeah. Let us do that. Amen. And our brothers and sisters around the world are enduring persecution because they understand the realities of heaven and hell. It says that Jesus endured the cross because of the joy that was set before him. Yeah. They know the realities of heaven, that the sufferings of this present age are not worthy be to be compared with the glory that will be revealed. And at the same time, they understand the plight of the lost. And so they press on and persevere. The least that we can do is, as Mark said, respond to their correspondence 
and to pray for them and intercede and recognize, you know, Hebrews talks about to, to be as though we were chained with them, with those that are in prison, mm -hmm. you know, to have that heart. Yep. And so in light of that, that, that talk about heaven and hell, we want to go to a video that we have uh, from one of our episodes that touches on that. So if we're ready, let's go ahead and roll that. You took a philosophy class? Yes. And what do they tell you about the afterlife? Uh, they basically just open up your mind and, like, tell you to step back from it. Because I went into, when I went, took the class, I was into religion. But when I came out, you know, it, it, opened my, it, it did open up my mind. and it opened was, your mind up and religion fell out? Something like that. <laughs> I kind of took it like, I started second thinking it. Do you believe in God's existence? Yes, I do believe God exists, but I, God as a superhuman being. But in the whole heaven and hell thing, uh, I think that's up to you. So the philosophy class got rid of heaven and hell for you? Yeah, basically. So it destroyed any thought of justice for Hitler and any hope for you as a human being. Is that what it did? Basically, because I think once you die, you know, that's it. But did that do you a favor? I mean, it got rid of any sense of justice. Hitler, you know who Hitler was? Yeah, I know who Hitler was. He killed six million Jews, yeah. and he's not going to get punished for it. Okay? And you've got no hope of living forever. Death is the end for you, and it could come tonight. That's what philosophy yeah, that's did true. for you. That's true. Yeah. Do you yeah. believe the Bible? I believe in the Bible. Okay, the Bible says you have to be born again to enter heaven. Are you born again? It says that? Yeah, you've got to be born again to enter heaven. John chapter 3, Jesus said, Marvel not that I say to you, you must be born again. I don't know that. Are you born again? Uh, I don't know. Well, let's find I don't out. I don't know if this is my first or second life. Well, we're that. not talking about reincarnation. We're talking about a supernatural experience where God... Forgives you your sins and gives you everlasting life. Well, how do you know? Yeah, that how do you know? Well, this is how, how you know? know. This is how you know you're a sinner for a start. Well, start at square one. Do you think you're a good person? I think I'm a good person. How many lies have you told in your life? Life? Um, lies. Yeah, in your whole life. Probably a lot. Okay. I'll say a lot. What do you call someone who's told lots of lies? Who is a liar? Uh -huh. Have you ever stolen something? Yes. Okay, you're a lying thief? Uh, no, because I just said uh, I have lied. Uh, and you mean I it's have. in the past? Yeah, it's in the past. Everything's in the past. Yeah. Okay, it doesn't <laughs> make any difference. Yeah, it's like saying to a judge, judge, I raped that woman, but it was in the past. It's kind of, <laughs> so what? So, um, do you still think you're a good person as a self-admitted lying thief? Pretty much, yeah. Okay. He just have took you, all of what I said and just threw it at me, yeah. Have, that's you, used a good God, have you used God's name in vain? Uh, yeah. I it's have. called blasphemy, Lewis. It's very serious. Jesus said, if you look at a woman and lust for her, you commit adultery with her in your heart. Have you ever looked at a woman with lust? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'll say so, so, Lewis, by your own admission, you're a lying thief, a blasphemer, and an adulterer at heart. Do you still think you're a good person? I still think I'm a good person, yeah. Okay. You know, a lot of the interviews I do are nostril shots. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he appreciated that, right? I tell you what, this morning I was at Cerritos College, and... Uh, and there was a hole in the ground. Seriously, I got a tall guy to stand in the hole, and I, I was able to get him on camera in the <laughs> right direction. Not. I did see. He you made actually him, told the guy yeah, get in the hole. Yeah, I so said, get in the hole. I want to, we want to be the same height. And he laughed, and that's how the, uh, the interview began. It was I funny. I it was a holy interview. <laughs> yeah, it was. Um, you know, I heard that young man talking about how he lost his perspective on heaven and hell after going into a class. And it just made me think of how many of our children today growing up in Christian homes are getting in, into colleges and universities and having their faith just shredded. It's Psalm 1, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. And that's what's happening, indoctrinated by a, a godless philosophy, and they right. come out as godless philosophers. And I think the tragedies oftentimes are not given that foundation at home to where they can counteract that. Yeah. Because there are believers that go to schools, go to universities and colleges, and are able to stand up boldly for the faith and make a difference. If there's no foundation, the wall is going to get knocked down real easy, right. and that's what's happening. Yeah. It's those empty warehouse shelves that the world is waiting to stock. It's you the know. cardboard walls. <laughs> <laughs> I walked on it's some... It's the plastic <laughs> doll houses. <laughs> All right. So um, anyway, that was a great interview, Ray. It looks like uh, you know God gave you uh, a way to impact that young man's life. hope so. That was good. All right. A question from Sherry. I understand that because of Adam's sin, all the earth as well as all of us are under the curse of sin and death. My question is, how do I explain to an unbeliever that it is fair and just that we are all cursed because of what Adam did? In the unbeliever's mind, that seems unjust because we are cursed from the beginning, though we, at least as an infant, ourselves haven't deserved that curse yet. I hope my question makes sense. Thank you again for your show and ministry. 
that mean more to myself and my family than I could ever express. So we're going to go to Mark Spence to help us answer that. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Invisible man. Yeah, you, you know, it's actually a, a real simple answer to this. You know, first of all, I would like to ask him, why do you feel you need to explain anything to the non-believer in this area? You know, the Bible says that the non-believer doesn't understand the things of the Spirit. You know, if we look at the Bible, the Bible really was a love letter written from God to his people. And I'm not saying that it's written in an esoteric, Gnostic way where it, it is completely out of touch with reality where people can understand. I'm just simply saying that it's a love letter. If I were to find a love letter between my dad and my mother when he was over in Vietnam, I'm not going to understand all their intricate details and the relationship and everything that, that happened and worked out. Why? Because it was written for a specific purpose. So if I feel that I need to explain certain things of God that they can't understand because they got spiritual blinders on, why would I even head into that direction? I, I wouldn't do it. I would show them that they are damned despite their Adamic nature. Romans 5 tells us that they have received, that we've all received that sinful nature from Adam. But we're not going to be held accountable for that. As I said earlier, that every idle word we speak, we're going to have to give an account. Therefore, I'm not going to give an account for easy sins or race sins or anybody's sins. I'm going to give an account for my motive as to why I did what I did. But for the non-believer, they're not giving an account for their motive. They're giving an account for everything. The non-Christian is held accountable for every sin that they've committed. The Christian is not held accountable for their sins, but their motive as to why they did. They're at the bema seat of Christ. So I would begin to open up God's divine law, the Ten Commandments, and demonstrate and show to the person, this non-believer, hey, look, forget about Adam. You don't need the help of Adam. You've accumulated so many sins inside your life that you won't be able to stand before God. I'm not your enemy today. In fact, I'm your best friend because I'm telling you the truth. I'm not going to gloss over this. So that's what I would do. That's how I would attack this question with them. Don't feel you need to explain everything. If it's not this question, it'll be a different question. If it's not that question, it'll be a different portion of Scripture. Hone in and focus in on the things that matter. And we see this when I'm out open-air preaching or I'm witnessing to someone one-on-one, uh, -on -one, and they'll say, hey, what about the Muslim? Hmm. What about the Mormon? What it is, it's a shield that they put up, not that they're Mormon or not that they're Muslim. It is a rabbit trail. It's a smoke screen so that they can hide behind that and they can do whatever it is that they want to do. I asked them point blank, are you Mormon? Are you Muslim? Well, no, well, let's not talk about them. I want to deal with your worldview. Are you really concerned about inheriting Adam's nature? No, all right, I don't think you are. Let's yeah. deal with your nature. Let's deal with who you are specifically, what you've done last night to separate, to alienate you from the God who made you. And then I would take it away from there. So yeah. be careful not to go on rabbit trails, hone in on the person, and you know their true predicament. Yeah. So. And again, when you re remove God from the equation, especially someone asking this question as an atheist, what's fairness? And right. why even talk about fairness? Right. You yes. know? You're demonstrating that the law of God is written upon your heart. You're demonstrating that you were created in the image of God who does have a sense of justice and fairness. The only problem is, is that if God is a creator of the universe and he is the one who has caused all that has been caused to be caused, then he's the one that sets the standard for what is fair and what is just. And thank God that he doesn't just give justice, but he also provides mercy and grace. Because if we all got justice, we'd all deserve hell. And that's what we all deserve. Because all we have to do is look into our lives and see the accumulation of sin, like Mark said. And if you see it from a human point of view, it won't worry you. But if you see it from God's point of view, that's when you'll get worried because oh. he's perfect and holy. Right. It's like we've shared the analogy before. If I threaten to kill a common citizen, I may go to jail for a little bit. I may, uh, you know, be put, uh, you know, under house arrest, whatever. But if I come up to the president of the United States and threaten to kill him, uh, I'm going to be doing 10 to 15 in federal prison yeah. uh, because of who the crime is against if I don't get shot on the spot. And so... But that's even thought life, too. If you conspire to kill him, right. and you just manifest a little bit of that on paper, they know what you're thinking, you've gone down. Yeah, and the problem is, is that our culture today is bereft of the understanding of the holiness of God. If you've never watched R.C. Sproul's video series on the holiness of God, let me tell you, uh, you've got to see it, because it'll give you a, just a small glimpse into the character of God and, and why he's so holy. So, so you don't want to be bereft. Don't be bereft. All right, Mark, take us to the tool of the day. Yes. What is the tool of the day? 
<laughs> press the, penny. It is the press I penny. I didn't have memory. one before me, but there it is, the press penny. Uh -huh. It has uh, the Ten Commandments etched in them. Ray's been doing that for many years, and now we have Rick the Penny uh, presser <laughs> that ends up doing that for us. But they're really neat. They come in a package of 100, and I can't remember exactly how much they are, but you can go to livingwaters.com. They're great conversation starters. You know, nobody's going to tend to throw that away. I like taking those with me to Knott's Ferry Farm or different places where you're going to see those penny press machines. Put it down inside or say, hey, you like press pennies, then you'll like this one. Here's a press penny for you. Those are 50 cents each so in, in places like Knott's Yeah, Oh, yeah, so even so more so. 75 cents. I've seen I 75 think, yeah, cents so for a dollar. I think they're about a dollar uh, for right. 100. But that, that penny machine, I was so <laughs> pleased to give it to Rick. <laughs> it, was, it had a curse on it. Daniel uh, and I, my, uh, my youngest son, him and I try to fix it. What would happen is a penny gets stuck, we'd go in and we'd make it 100 times worse. <laughs> well, things would break and, the, and we'd have to set it off. And then how many times did it, did it just white smoke pour out of it when oh. it was pressing pennies? And uh, the noise that thing made, aside oh, from boy. that. Yeah, <laughs> so uh, God yeah. bless Rick. And go visit Rick in the mental <laughs> facility when you get a chance. <laughs> no, really, he did That's save true. you guys. And yeah. saved Ray's teeth because Ray used to do them with his teeth. The whole lot, those, the, the eyes were difficult. Oh, boy. All right, we have one final question, Ray, and we got to get to this quickly because time is running out. Anyway, I just found the web series, and it brings me such joy to watch you guys at work. My question may not be thought-provoking, but I'd love to hear back from Ray Comfort. Yeah. I'm a fairly introverted 16-year-old <laughs> who fumbles her words together. I don't think I have the confidence to go out and street preach, as you all do. I've seen plenty of your videos and learned the techniques, but I'm worried my brain will freeze. I'm not much of a debater, you could say. Regardless, my question is, how can I share my faith not only with people in general, but also my peers without turning them off? The teenage years are definitely tricky, and I haven't mastered all the ways to get through it myself. So, Ray, being that you are a teenager, how, I mean, how would you answer? Oh, well, as take advantage of teenage years. You've got friends that you're going to lose. You know, in time, you'll get married, and you'll look back, and there'll just be memories. But now you're, you're mingling with hundreds of unsaved people. Right. So take advantage of it. See yourself as a firefighter, and... And talk about a, a firefighter who's shy, and he says, I don't think I can climb ladders to actually save people from burning buildings. Mm -hmm. Say, well, what are you? you know? So if you think you're going to get a rain freeze, hot it up with love. Be concerned for, for other people. Um, and the way to find out if you're going to walk is you crawl first. So just begin crawling. Give out some tracks. Ask people what do you think happens after someone dies. Let them do the talking and uh, show them respect. And something will rise up in you and you'll find it. God will take over your mouth. It's happened with me. Yeah. It's happened with you. We all know what it's like to have God speak through you. And it's just a wonderful experience. And, you know, I think in the final analysis, it's a matter of humility and sincerity. First of all, being humble enough to not care what people think of you or how you fumble and stumble in your way. What's that? What's that? What's that? You don't care. It doesn't matter. That's You're true. preaching the gospel. People are lost. And then it's sincerity. Yeah. Nothing can equal sincerity. You sincerely care about this person, and that'll overshadow any fumbling. And your or little stumbling. fumbling will show that you're sincere. Right. They'll realize you're not eloquent. Absolutely. Mm. So, friends, thanks for joining us. Check us out on Facebook and on onthebox.us. We'll see you tomorrow. For questions about On the Box with Ray Comfort or to submit questions for future shows, please email onthebox at livingwaters.com. That's onthebox at livingwaters.com. On the Box with Ray Comfort is an outreach of Living Waters. For more resources to inspire and equip you to fulfill the Great Commission, check out livingwaters.com or call toll-free 1-800-437-1893. Now go and preach the gospel.